Executive Director of Child Rights International, Right Up Here, has called on the court to make a proposal for rehabilitation of the four-year-old girl defiled at Asin Adedientem in the central region. According to him, all these need to be put in place to ensure that the child grows up with a sound mind. Addressing a press conference earlier today, Mr. Up Here called on government and other stakeholders to take a look at preventive measures and ensuring that issues of defilement become a thing of the past. The young girl and the alleged perpetrator are all children. And one of the things that is expected is that once the court is able to settle matters relating to that, and whether the boy will be uh, committed to the correctional center, there are still processes that we have to go through, both for the victim and then the perpetrator. For instance, in the side of the victim, we expect that the, the court will make uh, a pronouncement or a judgment that will lead to a proper rehabilitation of the child because the child has gone through some condition that that child is not familiar with. So the system requires that the child must be subjected to certain processes in order to be normal. But in most cases, the court do not make such pronouncement. But we feel that looking at this particular case, at least it should be a test for the court to also make certain pronouncement that would give responsibilities to administrative bodies to act in a manner that would lead to protection of children. Also, in relation to the alleged perpetrator, if the law deemed that is guilty, there are also processes that we expect that the, the, the system must go through to rehabilitate him in order to feed back to society. But in most cases, some of these issues come, we, we look at it, we talk about it, at the end of the day, we do not do justice. The whole administrative institutions that are handling this particular case should not always look at it from the, the piecemeal approach in terms of specific issues. The state must be interested in looking at preventive interventions rather than being, adopting this responsive approach in terms of dealing with issues of this nature. And if we don't follow up, we will still recall the same stories in terms of dealing with the case and then leaving the family on their own. Right Up Here also reveals that within two years, the central region has recorded up to 2,000 defilement cases, citing an incident at Comenda where a nine-year-old was defiled with her intestines and womb removed. Mr. Apia also called on journalists to help bring the news to light as the perpetrator is walking free. So for instance, from 1st January 2014 to 31st October 2015, the farming cases that have been reported in Central Region alone is 1,831, which for me is a clear indication that there's a lot of education and sensitization program need to be done in that particular area. There are some that we've not, the media, you know, uh, cut the attention of the media, so we're not talking about it. But as we speak, there's a very serious issue that we are handling now. That, for me, is even worse. Now, for instance, when you go to uh, Commander, there's a, this nine-year-old girl. The case is in court, all right. But this, there's this nine-year-old girl that has been defiled. The, victim, the, the perpetrator has been identified, a standing trial. But what happened was that this guy uh, defiled this girl, and in the process of removing his manhood, I don't know how it happened, but the manhood came out with the womb of this young girl, as well as his intestine. And unfortunately, this boy has been given bail and is working on the streets of Cape Coast. But for us, this is a very serious issue that no court or institution should tolerate in terms of handling this particular issue. So we think that these issues that are happening, we should not take them for granted. We should, as people, have interest 
in a way and manner we treat our children, and the state institutions, all the arms of government must be up and doing in terms of their commitment to children issues in this country. It's quite sad and still on defilement. An 11-year-old girl who was defiled two weeks ago in Kanishi is now battling to get her life back to normalcy after the incident two weeks ago. Mother of the girl says he, she was out selling in the night when the suspect, a family friend, entered the unlocked room and entered the room to defile her daughter. She is also alleging that the investigator who was working on the case was part of a meeting ostensibly to get her to withdraw the case from the police station and settled at home. Join you six Masola Baba has been speaking with them. My child was asleep. They are two. And I was outside selling around 9.30 p.m. What happened? Said she, she was asleep. You don't know what happened. But she saw the guy putting his penis. And I said, oh, okay. So I was like, I wasn't, I didn't believe what my child was saying. So I was questioning her over and over and over again. She said, yes, that's not the first time she saw it. The first time she was asleep, she thought it was a dream. She saw the, she saw someone, like she was dreaming like someone has put their hand in a vagina and she, she's like, she woke up in the dream. She saw the guy's face, but she thought it was a dream. So she slept again. So this time she opened the eye and she saw the guy again and it's like two times. So, so it's like she has seen the same person twice. So she couldn't sleep again. And she saw the guy standing in the room. And she was like struggling with the guy, but she was afraid the guy would do something to her. So she couldn't shout. What were they sleeping? In my room. In, the, in this room? Yes. Do you lock it before you go out? I, Fine, I'm selling and I saw I close very late in the night and they go to school around 5 30 in the morning. So when they sleep, normally I lock. But now when I'm locking, the key is not working. So usually they lock it behind. Then when I come, I'll call them. But due to that, they'll be complaining, Ma, Ma, I'm sleeping, I'm feeling sleepy and you are waking me up. So I just close it this way. Then when I come, no, one's, no one knows I have lock it or not. But when I come, I just push the door and I enter the room. And I, I, I questioned the guy that very Friday night and he accepted that, yes, he came here. And the first time, um, the first time it was like he didn't sleep with her, but he fingered her. And so this is the second time that he slept with her. It's not feeling well at all. She's discharging and each and every day she has to change pad twice a day. Even when she's feeling urinating, she will not feel like urinating, but the time she will be sitting down, you, you realize she has urinating. I don't know. Even when she wants to go to the toilet, she will not feel it. Hey. Mm. She even fell down three days today, the bathhouse. I don't know what's wrong with her. Yeah. My dad said what he will say is fine now. So he would talk to me, and then the CID in question was sitting down. The CID was sitting down with me and my dad and other relatives, and then the guy's family members. And it was like, they should bring 3,500. Who, who said it? My dad said, they should ask me the amount I have spent in the hospital. And I said, yes, I have spent a lot. I spent about 1,500, almost 1,500 in the hospital. And they said, okay, they'll pay that amount and then compensate the girl with 2,000. That's the guy's father. He said he will compensate the girl with 2,000. My, my, my father said, it's okay. They should bring the money so that we finish everything at the police station. And I said, I'm not taking any money from anyone. I will not sell my child's pride. Yeah. The CID was sitting with us when we were seeing all this, mm. that we would redraw the case. And then after redrawing, they should bring the 3,500 so that we finish everything okay. at the police station. So this discussion was at the police station? Yes, at the Dovsu department. Can I see?
and the, the police officer did not say anything. So all, the, all of this discussion happened at the Dove Sioux office? Yes. The, my dad said I should go and bring type withdrawal letter. And I said, from where? And the CID directed me. Kaneshi Post Office. There are people there. And I said, how? I asked the CID how I will type the letter. And she said, if I go there and I talk to the typewriters, I should just tell them I have a defilement case at a police station and I want to withdraw the case. They will just type it for me. Then I sign. So I was about to go and I said, no. I will not take any money. I will not redraw this case. So she was like, I should go and type the letter and bring it. She sent someone to come and call me to bring the letter in a hurry. And I told the person, I was on phone. So I told the person, I'm coming. I went and she said, where is the letter? And I said, oh, madam, please, I have not typed it. And she said, why? I should type it there. Uh, her, her boss is looking for the letter. And I said, no, even if I type the letter, I will not sign. And I told her the things I will type in the letter, I don't think any police personnel will take and read them. He or she will accept it. 3,500. Well, that's the mother of the victim there making those allegations about the investigator who was handling the case as well. But we have been trying to reach the said investigator. We have not been successful as yet, but we will bring you more uh, on this in our subsequent bulletins. Uh, do stay tuned to join News as we bring you more of those stories. And it is, uh, of course, our campaign to stop the menace and also seek justice for victims. Remember, the hashtag is justice for kids. Hashtag justice for for kids. Away from the shortages in vaccines that help fight the six childhood killer diseases have often uh, had dire consequences for child health in Ghana. The country is close to reaching universal access and immunization for all children, but several others, especially in hard to reach communities, are being left behind. In the following report, my colleague Justice Bedu reports on how vaccine shortages puts the lives of thousands of children on the line. Okay. So that's 12.4. This baby is in pain, heavily malnourished, crying for help. No, no, you can. I can be going. Yeah. Okay. The mother, looking on, has had to walk for nearly two hours to reach this health center, where vaccines for children like hers are being administered. Biro, the community where this health center is located, like many in rural Ghana, is heavily impoverished. It's tough getting medical essentials like vaccines that fight the six childhood killer diseases here. Vaccines have proven their worth in saving the lives of hundreds of thousands of children across the country. Take the story of Biro, for example. No child under age five has died here since 2015. Now, for a region that has one of the highest child mortality rates, that is huge progress. But now there are major challenges that means accessing the vaccines themselves is a problem. Centers like these where they are administered are few and far in between. Sometimes even the money to purchase them is a problem. And so communities like Biro would have to wait. Sometimes we have to cross a river before reaching the health center. Some mothers have more than one child who should be immunized, but because of the distance, you can't take all of them, so it's difficult to come all the time. If the child falls below uh, this red, Sunyoro Patrick, the health assistant here, tells of the impact vaccines have made in keeping children alive. Because of uh, the immunization, now they don't visit the clinic often with their sick children. And then those days, we see children that are suffering from polio and other things. Then their children are deformed. For now, it has been very helpful to them and their families. So they don't get some of those sickness. And then the TB, for instance, now we don't get children having a TB. If the vaccines are not available, we will get a lot of outbreaks, uh, especially uh, the meningitis. 
se ka hu mo nimbiri apopo galpo bi timama ni abanu Ache, Nine out of every ten children in Ghana are now covered by vaccination against the six childhood killer diseases. But no child should be left behind. What is most worrying is that efforts at reaching every single child in Ghana with these life-saving vaccines have stagnated for years. Every day of delay means another child is at risk of a preventable death. Justice Beidou, Joy News, Bureau in the Upper West Region.